Well, good morning, Kay. The 49ers started off-season workouts on Monday, and there was no player or coach availability. But the big news was about who wasn't there, and that second-year linebacker, Reuben Foster. The team announced Sunday that Foster would not be joining his teammates in these off-season workouts because he was charged with three felonies last week, including domestic violence, and he needed to take this time to focus on his legal situation and to give his teammates the opportunities to prepare for the 2018 season. I was also told by a team source that later on this week, Foster and the 49ers will be meeting to come up with a plan, a structure, and a support plan to help him navigate through the situation. Now, on Monday, we did not hear from Coach Kyle Shanahan or General Manager John Lynch, but on Wednesday, we should hear from Lynch on this and other subjects as he does have a pre-draft meeting with the media. Back to UK. Appreciate the update very much, Steve. Uh, you can tweet the show at hashtag GMFB as we switch over and check in with Will Selva, manning the news desk, out in LA this morning. Hey, Will. All right, how's it going there, Kay? Well, we start in Dallas, where former wide receiver Des Bryant will now be throwing up the X for some other team this season. As he told our Jane Slater in an exclusive interview, Bryant believed teammates loyal to head coach Jason Garrett led to his exit out of town. Now, the man who wore uniform number 88 before him thinks there was a lot more to it than just that. Hall of Famer and NFL Network analyst Michael Irvin says the fire that stoked Dez tended to burn others in the process, if you will. He joined up to the Minute Live here on NFL Network on Monday and explained what happened toward the end of his time in Dallas. Dez is a fire, and what happens is when he gets in these situations, he does what he knows how to do. He fights, and if you're not careful with how you speak to him and how you speak with him, he ends up fighting everybody and anybody and even fighting some of the people that are trying to help him. And I think that was the situation in Dallas, that, that it, it, it got a little bad off the football field with Des fighting to get back where he belongs, where he wants to be and where he belongs. And I think he was fighting even the people that were trying to help him. Right, some interesting perspective from Irv. Meanwhile, Vikings linebacker Eric Kendricks is padding his bank account thanks to a new contract extension. NFL Network, CN Rappaport, and Mike Garofolo both reporting it's a five-year deal worth $50 million with $25 million guaranteed. Kendricks had a career-high 136 tackles in 2017. Saints head coach Sean Payton has what some teams in the league wish they had, a franchise quarterback. Payton is comfortable in knowing he doesn't have to find one in this year's draft. Payton telling the MMQB he would be a little uneasy if he did because the pressure to get a quarterback is so great in this league. You're looking at one of the guys who most teams are looking at, but especially those of the top five. Sam Darnold, he says he doesn't see in Andrew Luck or a Carson Wentz. Now, Peyton went on to say he wouldn't be surprised if only one of these quarterbacks would be standing in four or five years. But if he had to guess, it would be Sam Darnold. And this has freezing cold takes oh, written yeah. all over it. Our guy Fred, I know, will be all over it. Fred is on top of it. Stay tuned. Uh, Will oh, Subtle yeah. will be going in, into our hot draft time machine yet again Ooh. as we are gearing up for the draft. It's not always that we go into a press conference from the day before where we actually show the full sound, but yesterday was pretty cool. I think we all saw this on Twitter. We want to show it on our show. The Jaguars began off-season workouts yesterday. They also had a small ceremony for linebacker Paul Puzlesny, who announced his retirement last month. This happens every year. But friend of the show, Telvin Smith, took the mic and opened things up. And if you haven't seen this yet, just enjoy. So let me go ahead and get started before I cry too much. Paul Puzlesny. A king born April 10th, 1984. Man went to high school, won state championships when he was in high school. Went to college. Uh, went to college, Penn State, a Nittany Lion. I asked him one time, what the hell is a Nittany Lion? <laughs> and he told me, oh, it's up in the mountains, it's a lion in the mountains. He was the first junior captain since 1968. The, the uh, won the Chuck Bednarik Award twice. Made history. Dick Buckus Award winner. Best linebacker. Best defensive player. 
He even came in his junior year and beat my Seminoles in the Orange Bowl. He left that game with a tweaked knee and decided to come back for his junior year. And then that time, he broke the school record in tackles, came back and dominated. And that alone shows the character and man that we're talking about here today. <sighs> he was named the Consensus All-American. I can go on and on about the guy and the accolades that he done did. But I promise you, I never thought I'd meet somebody who didn't grow up in the struggle that I did and loved the game as much as I did. That's powerful. I've never met either of them in person. All I know is that I want to be friends with Paul Puslesny if he was to evoke that sort of friendship, emotional amazingness out of me that's amazing There's so many things that he said but at the very end he said I never thought I'd meet somebody that didn't grow up in the struggle like I grew up in the struggle like I did love love the game as much um, I got two boys that are in sports and I oftentimes tell them that they're gonna play against kids that grow up with 25% of what you grow up with one parent in the household and they struggle and they love the game more than you how are you gonna find that passion so the fact that two guys that look completely different, mm -hmm. raised completely mm -hmm. different, identify with this game the same way. It's deep, man. I can go on and on. Well, the reason why it's crime, but it's amazing. That's, that's the NFL. Everyone wants to knock the NFL, but black guy, white guy, mm -hmm. different backgrounds, different mm -hmm. brothers. And mm -hmm. the, the locker room's the great equalizer, and these guys came together. I've never seen that before. We've seen a lot of athletes cry at their own retirements. You have Brett Favre, Andre Dawson. But someone else's, all those awards he listed for Papa's listening, that's what he should hang his hat on, that I have a teammate who feels this strongly about me. That's what I'm most proud of. Great stuff. You guys can chime in at hashtag GMFB. Next, we'll jump into our time machine and give you everything you need to know about the 2009 experience. We'll talk the draft. We'll talk pop culture. We'll talk blue ink on Kyle Brandt's face. All